the day of the week needs no introduction, my dudes, because we are here in Planet Coaster, so you should know what day of the week it is. Um, here we are, uh, back in Planet Coaster, I'm going to try and introduce this video properly now. This is just another episode where we're not really building any rides or anything, instead going to be focusing on structures. So we've built the kind of central core to the park, which is this island, and the central core of this island being the Intamin Mega Lights. Obviously there's a few more things we need to do on this island, but we have, a now, we have now established a central hub. We can start thinking about how the park is going to start branching out away from the central island. So we're going to be building two bridges in this episode, mainly mainly focusing on the larger of the two, which would be a suspension bridge that will probably be the thumbnail. I haven't made the thumbnail yet, but I'm guessing that's going to be the thumbnail for this video. We're going to be building two bridges, one of them being a big suspension bridge, the other one being essentially the same bridge we had to get to the actual main island of the park, that uh, red arch bridge. Uh, before we do that, though, I thought I'd just finish off, actually fin complete the terrain for the lake itself. So I, I didn't think it was too realistic, obviously, having grass form the lake bed so I just went ahead and removed the water quickly to paint the ground so that we can reinstate the water and have a <laughs> somewhat re more realistic look to the lake and then we can go ahead and start planning our bridges I think not sure what I'm doing here I thought maybe we could plan another flat, flat ride but then I remembered that you know we have to focus on what we needed to do and that thing is the fact I complete you know what I skipped through this footage right and I was like, okay, this is what this is what happens in this video. The first part is going to be building the arch bridge, then the second part is building the suspension bridge, and then it finally finishes off with some support work for the Intamin Megalite. I must have somehow completely skipped over this. I, I, I thought the intro was shorter than this, I'm not going to lie. I didn't write a script or anything, I just tend to skim through the footage and then, you know, decide what I'm going to talk about. So anyway... Now that we've done some curbing and I couldn't think of how to introduce that, so I started making excuses for myself somehow, uh, we can get to the actual one of the, the first bridge. So when I said it's kind of the same bridge from the entrance, I meant that very, very literally. It is exactly the same bridge. I just duplicated the entire structure and copied it across. Uh, ended up having to be a little bit of a, a faff. I said faff a couple of episodes ago, and everyone thought I said the F word. I guess faff is one of those Britishisms that Americans don't understand, or I'm assuming Americans aren't familiar with. Faff just means like wasting time. So when I'm saying, oh, I'm faffing about, it's just I'm, I'm wasting time. Anyway, I, you can see I tried to save some time by duplicating this bridge to span this second body of water, but I realized that it wasn't going to be long enough. So that's when I decided to go ahead and build a proper big structure. So I went with a suspension bridge that I've been... It's a design I've been thinking of using for a while. I've always liked building, building suspension bridges in this game. My favourite to date is probably this one, but before this it was the ones in Crimson Tower, if you remember that series. There was some like really modern style uh, suspension footbridges, which I really liked the way they came out. I feel like they're a little bit dated now, like the actual t style I used to build them was a little bit lazy well not suppose lazy but it used a lot of, a lot of pieces were pieces that were bound to the grid so it was a bit more restricted in terms of how i could build it whereas these days i probably use more free parts if that makes sense so crimson tower suspension bridges were good the neptune park suspension bridge whilst it the actual aesthetic looked good i think it was a bit too big and chunky and cartoon like to, to kind of fit in with that park really so this is a bit more of an understated and a bit more realistic uh, suspension bridge it's a lot it's a lot less simplistic in its design it's a little bit more intricate and a bit more kind of detailed and i, I really like the way it came out basically it was modeled after i believe it's 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 from a model designed for a model railway and i'm pretty sure it's the grand suspension bridge for the hornby train set so if you just type in like grand suspension bridge i'm pretty sure that's what it is i think it's from a train set in some department store that used it and i used that as the image that I based the model on. I mean, it's not an exact copy of it. I did take my own artistic liberties here and there, but the color scheme and overall general look of it was taken from a model, which I'm assuming was based upon real world engineering standards. So I like to go for this sort of very deep, going for a very detailed look and just putting one segment and then copying the whole thing across. So the whole structure ends up looking really, really detailed, even though a lot of it is just a clone of another part. So it doesn't actually take as long as you might think it would take to make at first glance. Then we're going to go ahead with the temple pieces, which is something I've been using a lot more in this series actually i started using the temple pieces quite a bit in neptune park which is the, i think that was when i was building that park or at least i started that park when the temple parts were added uh, but since then i've I found them to be far more diverse and useful than i might have originally thought and that, that it's just a really useful piece to have uh, the adventure pack is definitely one of the best packs in the game just so you can get the temple pieces because they're essentially just normal walls and big blocky structures 
obviously, but they can be rotated along any axis. You have full freedom of movement rather than most of the walls in this game where they can only be kind of laterally moved. They can't be rotated or tilted or anything like that. So Temple was very good. You can see placing these red barriers here. Obviously, they look a little bit unsightly. They don't really fit in with the aesthetic of the bridge itself. And I had no intention of bothering making them fit in because, as you can see here, I'm clipping them into the temple walls. And so it, it might seem like that was a bit of a waste of time or a bit of a redundant feature. The reason for this, though, is that guests will uh, not cross those barriers regardless of what level they're at. So even if you sink them into the ground, guests will still know they're there and they won't walk through them. So what you can do, if you have structures that intersect pathways like this bridge, without those barriers, guests will just walk straight through the walls like nothing was there. But if you have the barriers there, the guests will just walk around the structure. So it's a good little way for building structures in the middle of big square plazas and not have to worry about guests walking through the structures. I mean, I, know, I pretty much never open my parks anymore, so I'll probably never actually encounter this problem. But it's just for the sake of if I ever did open it. I mean, I probably might open it, but just never record it just to kind of see guests enjoying and then have a mistletoe peak re uh, realization where nothing actually works and all the paths are broken. So maybe I can sa save myself some, I don't know, upset <laughs> by not opening it. This is a, this is going to be a long, long time. I just literally have just finished editing a roller coaster, like creating the roller coaster. It's a pretty small layout, it's only 40 meters high, and I've spent the best part of three hours making it because a lot of the rides in this park are done with the four meter smoothing technique. Yes, I'm finally committing to actually trying to make realistic smooth coasters, and oh, it come out they come out so much better. But dear God, they take so long to edit, so um, and create. But I think, the, I think the payoff is worth it. So here you can see me just using the thinner wooden pieces here just to create a nice dark green structure. I believe the actual bridge I base this on has the same color scheme with dark green uh, cabling and then sort of beige towers, or it might be blue cabling. I'm not sure. I probably should open it, but I don't think I actually saved the bookmark. I tend to, I have this bookmarks folder in Chrome just called Planet Coast, and every time, anytime I see an interesting architectural model or design or even something like, I don't know, an original Lego set, because Lego models can often be well proportioned for Planet Coaster because they're blocky and cartoonish and can be easily recreated with Planet Coaster's building tools. Anything like that, I instantly just open the image and then bookmark it into the Planet Coaster folder, and then I'll just open the folder all at once, it's like 40 tabs, and just flick through until I find an image that I think, yeah, that would actually work in this episode. And then I'll go ahead and base a building on that, or based on several images, I can use different I don't know, inspirations here and there. And then I will tend to just delete them straight out of the folder once I've done. So I don't end up having, you know, a <laughs> too, too massive. I was going to say, so I end up having a massive archive in the folder, but it is a massive archive. So at least not too colossal of an archive. So there's the, uh, the main span of the bridge done. Obviously, we need to do the other part, which is the actual anchoring of the towers to the ground. I guess it's not totally realistic because it's not a perfect arch or smooth transition from the deck of the bridge down to ground level. It's a very sharp angle. That's just a, unfortunately a victim of Planet Coaster's path tool. You can make per curved pathways very, very like trickily by raising terrain and molding the path of a terrain or by like very, very caref carefully sloping it. But in my experience, I've never really managed to do it well or consistently. So you could have a symmetrical look to bridges. I guess if you're going for like a rustic bridge where maybe it was designed in medieval times or at least to give that look that it was designed in medieval times when actual architectural process wasn't quite as accurate. So you would get all these deformities and, you know, asymmetry might work there, but grand structures like this, where it's clearly going for a Victorian look and sophisticated architecture, um, doesn't really work. So I, I went with the compromise of having the angles, the sharp angles. I don't think it looks too bad, honestly. I think it looks pretty realistic. I mean, even if it wouldn't work kind of from an actual engineering point of view, at the end of the day, this isn't here to support vehicles or anything like that. It's just guests walking along. So we could even go with the fact that the, the, the actual suspension bridge look is just for show. The actual structure of the bridge is maintained by the steel underneath the paths and the two towers that hold it up. I feel like you could probably go with that. So even if you want to nitpick this and say it doesn't actually work from an architectural standpoint, it doesn't matter, guys. It, it works from a decorative standpoint, but I, I like to th I'd like to think that this would work okay. I do notice here that these supports are actually slightly slanted. I don't think I realized at the time, but I'm pretty sure I did go back and rectify that. So worry not. I, anyone that I, I can tell that a lot of you are very disturbed and possibly even frightened by that, but I just want to clear the air right now that that will get fixed uh, before the episode is done. Am I doing that now? No, I think I'm copying. I think I got quite far into the build before I realized. Yeah, there are, I realize now that there are uh, 
they're slanted. So I'll go ahead and just fix them and then put them back into the, and then sort of clumsily and shoddily put them back in and hopefully no one will notice. As in no guests will notice. I mean, you guys will notice because I just spent a long time <laughs> rambling on about it. But uh, that's pretty much the main structure of the Spetschen Bridge done. Uh, I Like I said, I think this is probably my the best bridge I've ever built in Planet Coaster. Planet Coaster bridges, I've always liked building them. I did say hello, I really like building suspension bridges, but I also like building bridges just in general in this game. I don't really know why. I think I just like the challenge because bridges in real life often have these big arcing structures and lots of fancy kind of architectural flares that are often quite difficult to nail in Planet Coaster unless you're going for kind of very basic traditional wood like brick bridges but even then it's 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 quite i, I think it's quite difficult so i it's, not, it's always nice having the challenge of going for something that doesn't look like it was really built in planet coaster at least not the way the planet coaster building tool was necessarily designed to work like i guess the temple pieces weren't really designed to be forming the backbone of suspension bridges though i know the devs are you know aware that the pieces aren't usually used in the way they're quote unquote intended to be used so i was pretty happy with the overall look but i thought something was a little bit missing it looked a little bit too blocky so i added those arch pieces to the actual t uh, t uh, bridge ports uh, connecting them to the underside of the path and i think that really completed the look and then just had to sink in some of the actual footer here so we had it, it was the, the path was constant all the way through it's been a very long day guys i know i feel like i've said the phrase it's been a very long day guys bear with me uh, in every single episode of this series so far but it, it is true i record these after work and it's summer in britain and we never really cope too well with extreme weather in either way especially because i live in plymouth so we're not very good at extreme weather we just get moderate weather all week, all year round so occasionally when it's summer when we get absolutely scorching weather it's too hot at work. It's a disaster because we don't have air conditioning in the UK, really. So everyone, <laughs> I remember last year there was a big heat wave and all Americans were like, oh, are you kidding me? Like, this is just like, you know, in Texas, we get that. That's like the winter for us. I'm like, yeah, but you have air conditioning and you're acclimatized to it. We're not acclimatized to it. And we don't have air conditioning facilities anywhere except in our cars. And that's if we're lucky, right? My old car didn't have air conditioning in it. My current one does. Thank goodness. It saved my, saved, saved me last, last summer having air conditioning in my car. But, uh, yeah, we don't have air conditioning or anything like that. So at work, so I work at a hospital, so we see a lot of uh, compromised individuals, like very old people or very young people or people who are not in the healthiest of states. And we always get people fainting en masse in the summer. And we have to get fans out. We have whole protocols for dealing with heat and dealing with patients that have collapsed. It's a real mess and it's not very pleasant. And so we're kind of ramping up to that. It's not quite at that point just yet, but it's getting to the point where we're all getting a bit hot and bothered. We're getting a bit lethargic. We're having uh, we're having trouble. We're having trouble. We're a bit of a mess, this country, <laughs> um, adapting to it. I said Plymouth especially because not only are we terrible in the summer, but we're terrible in the winter as well. Because whilst most of the UK does get a bit of snow in the winter, and so we're kind of used to it, Plymouth never, ever, ever gets snow because it's so far southwest that we basically never get snow, except in some parts of it. But this uh, last year, I think we had a bit, and the year before we had a bit as well. And literally all it takes is literally not even like a centimetre, just like a very fine dusting of snow and the entire city shuts down like the buses stop running cars start crashing uh the hospital shut down <laughs> like we were told you guys have just got to go home uh, your patients have all been cancelled you have to just go obviously things like a and e stayed open but all outpatients which is where i work was just shut down so i had to go home yeah it was kind of funny how plymouth just isn't incapable of, ex of dealing with any kind of extreme weather but that does go for most of the uk as well Anyway, we're just sort of finishing things off here and there. So I finished, I changed the color scheme of the chair swing. So it actually matches the color it is in the thumbnail of its episode. Also just painting the grand carousel a slightly more eye-pleasing color. We've done all the extra support work needed for the intimate mega light. So I guess that's pretty much the episode wrapping up. The only thing left to do that I felt just needed doing at the time is we can build an entrance archway for the roller coaster and add to the name. So I think at the moment it's called Blue Bullet. At the time I just called it Blue because I was like, maybe we just call them the colours they are, but I thought that was a bit lame. We should probably just give it some sort of name. So I went with Blue Bullet for this one. I mean, once I've decided on the sign, I like watching... Um, other people play Planet Coast and just seeing them go through the same process of just selecting billions of scenery pieces trying to decide which fits best in that particular instance. Um, in the end, I went for a Western style sign because it's wooden, matches the theme. But I'm going to leave it there, guys. Uh, we'll show some quick photographs of the bridge. Look at that beautiful shot. 
And then we're going to go ahead and cut to the end screen. And on the left is a link to the full playlist. As always, the one on the right is a link to a video suggested for you by YouTube's recommendation algorithm. Uh, there's also a link to Patreon and to subscribe on screen. And in the description, there's links to Instagram, Twitter, Discord, and my merchandise. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys, and enjoy the rest of your Wednesday.